FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. You're listening to Almond in the Morning. Common Sense Radio. Good morning, you bunch of drunks. Hey, Republicans. Welcome to the show. Well, well, well. Haven't heard from Spanking Don in a while. What's up, Donnie? What's happening with you? Don't forget the spanker. How are you doing here, partner? I'm fine. So you have tar and feathers? Really, huh? Just well, handy? Got tar pit on simmer out there in that case you change your mind and a couple of feather mattresses and just That's in case great. you change your mind. That must have hurt though when they tarred and feathered people because uh doesn't the tar isn't it hot? Yeah, and then they then they used to put them on rails and then run them out of the on a old rail post and they'd bounce them out of town like that. Thus the thus the running out of town on a rail. Yeah, that's right. Idiom. Well, you know, great. Just, he they're doing everything they can to depress people from wanting to succeed in anything. And that's why they want to, you know, they do that tax for 250000 and over and that. You know, anybody, nobody will want to succeed enough to make 250000 Yeah, but you know, you know what? They, they do want people to succeed. They want them to succeed in giving more money to the United States Treasury. That's what they want them to succeed in. They want to succeed in continuing and perpetuating the racket known as the federal income tax. And they want to be able to take the income tax that they seize from you, the income that they seize from you, and redistribute it and create more programs. And that's why we have the spending that we do. And I, I, I cite the income tax as the main reason why our country is going down the tubes when it comes to prosperity. Because once the income tax was introduced, it gave government officials all the power in the world to go up to Washington and then be employed to figure out ways to spend it. That's how it all works. If we didn't have the income tax, the government would still be on the diet it had before 1913, and that diet was established by the states. And the states would collect income taxes and then give money to the federal government, and the federal government didn't have an unlimited, bottomless pit of cash the way they do now. And as I said earlier, if there was any other organization in this country that operated based on the model that they take your money, shake you down, turn you upside down, have the money fall out of your pockets, take that money, and then redistribute it or use it for their own purposes, it would be known as racketeering. And that's exactly what we're dealing with right now. Mitt Romney fighting back against the uh, Obama weekend debacle known as the famous you-didn't-really-earn-it speech. Do we believe in America that is great because of government, or do we believe in an America that's great because of free people allowed to pursue their dreams and build their future? Yeah, that's right. And I wonder if that, you know, you talk about these speeches like tear down that wall. You wonder if that speech will go down in history, the one Obama did as the, uh, you didn't earn that job. <laughs> you didn't earn, earn your status speech. That ought to be great. I can't wait to see that 40 years from now. Neil Cavuto interviewing Mark Levin. Levin's a pretty tough sell especially when it comes to Romney, and here he is, interviewed by... Well, Mark clearly Cavuto. the Mormon is storming, and just count one Mark Levin loving. Mark, what do you make of his response today? I like it. Now, four more months of this, and we should be okay. Yeah, way to go, Mark. I don't understand the whole Mormon is storming thing. Now, I love Neil Cavuto, but where else would you utilize somebody's religion? Like, oh, the Jew is John. You would never say that. But the Mormon is storming, huh? <laughs> okay. John Sununu, he was on to something here, I think. The president clearly demonstrated that he has absolutely no idea how the American econ- economy functions. The men and women all over America who, who have worked hard to build these businesses, their businesses, from the ground up, uh, is how our economy became the envy of the world. It is the American way. And I wish this president would learn how to be an American. Now that is money right there. Great job, John Sununu. No, don't go on CNN. No. No, don't apologize. So when, you, when you say you apologize, are you apologizing directly to the president? Yeah, I'm apologizing for using those words. No, I- no, no. What are you apologizing for? Obama and his gang and the moonbats who call the show here are always questioning Mitt Romney's dedication to America and loyalty to America. What do you think the whole tax shelter Swiss bank account argument is all about? What do you think the outsourcing is all about? They are explicitly questioning Mitt Romney's loyalty to America. 
every single day. So why don't you do it the same way there, John Sununu? It's okay. And by the way, who is uh, Wolf Blitzer to be, you know, asking for an apology from anybody? And who is Sununu to want to give it to him? I don't know. You think Santorum will apologize this for this? This sounds like a two-bit dictator, not a president of the United States. Yeah, a two-bit dictator. You think Santorum will have to, have to apologize for that? Listen, this is a death match right here. And it's a match over how we perceive American values. We have one side that perceives American values as one of reflecting a European model of wealth redistribution, wealth seizure, of regulation and taxation, and another group that believes that liberty uh, leads to prosperity and liberty is pinched by suffocating regulation and taxation, which is why we don't have a prosperous and growing economy right now. Two sides, very distinct. We have a clear choice. That's the bottom line. Chris Matthews, this is interesting. He says we ought to leave Obama alone. I mean, he's this guy's done everything right. He's raised his family right. He's fought his way all the way to the top of the Harvard Law Review in a blind test becomes head of the review, the top editor there. Everything he's done is clean as a whistle. Yeah, I mean, but everything Romney has done is clean as a whistle, too. I mean, he didn't do the whole Harvard Law Review thing. I agree with Chris Matthews. I mean, I, I, it, it's pretty evident that Obama is a really good family guy, good father, good husband. I mean, I, what, what could you possibly argue with uh, what Obama is doing there? All of that irrelevant. Well, Romney's irrelevant, right? His, his success, his family is attacked by the left all the time. The likes of Chris Matthews, they resent the fact that Mitt Romney has houses and provides for his family, don't they? Or is it just the way Obama provides for his family that's acceptable to Americans like Chris Matthews? But the fashion in which Mitt Romney provides for his family is not acceptable, supposedly. You know, otherwise, Matthews is right. I, mean, I, th- I think that uh, Obama appears to be, from the family perspective and his commitment to his family, a good guy. And so is Mitt Romney. He's just a Republican, so it's not really acceptable to the likes of Chris Matthews. Your phone calls are welcome, 969-9797.